Hey guys, it's Catfish here again and welcome back to my channel. In my last post, I used a pixel analysis technique to count the X and Y distance between bullet shots in a spray, followed by statistical analysis to determine which AR has the most precise spray in PUBG Mobile. Assuming you have already seen that last video, I have a revolutionary new way of thinking about recoil and performing the statistical analysis portion of the experiment. You see, instead of looking at weapon recoil in terms of how many pixels the gun jumps per second in the vertical or the horizontal direction, an even better way that fully captures the gun handling of a weapon is to simply look at the unpredictability of the weapon when you fire it. And the added benefit of using unpredictability to measure gun handling is that it also takes stability into account. Alright, I'm getting ahead of myself, so let me start from the beginning of this scientific journey and let me walk you through how I came to this revelation. It all started from when I realized I could calculate stability and drift in a more meaningful way compared to my last video. I realized that instead of just taking an average of all the delta x values, a much better way of calculating stability is by measuring how many times in a spray does a gun change direction, from a positive delta x value to a negative one or vice versa. In case you forgot, delta x means the change in the x position from one bullet to the next. A positive delta x means the next bullet went to the right, and a negative delta x means the next bullet went to the left. Therefore, every time you see a delta x go from a positive to a negative value or vice versa, that means a gun is changing direction. Therefore, if a gun has a string of all positive or all negative delta x values, that means the gun is not returning to its original position, but instead drifting away. So, in order to measure this mathematically, we use an if function where if delta x is 0, we print 0 because the gun did not move horizontally from the current bullet to the next. However, if delta x is not 0, then we have the delta x of the current bullet divide the delta x of the previous bullet to determine whether there is a change in sign from positive to negative or vice versa. Like I said before, whether or not there is a sign change tells us whether the direction of the bullet spray changes. If there is a direction change, we print 1 to indicate that the direction has changed once. We can then take a sum of the column and determine the total number of times a gun changes direction in one spray. Now looking at this data, if it was true that every bullet was completely independent of another bullet, then it is extremely unlikely for a gun to fire so many bullets in one direction without the gun changing directions more times because each bullet has a 50-50 chance of either going to the left or going to the right. This means we just proved that drift does exist mathematically and that it can be quantified by how many times a gun changes directions per spray. Now, to measure the severity of the drift, we can use another if function. If the number in the previous column is zero, that means there is no direction change, which means there is drift. Therefore, we print the absolute value of delta x of the current bullet minus the delta x of the previous bullet. We will apply this formula to the whole data set and then take an average of the column. By doing this, we can mathematically calculate how many pixels on average will the gun drift per bullet if the gun actually does drift. Okay. So now that we learn how to calculate stability and drift and how we can represent these concepts with actual numbers, let's move on to how we can actually calculate recoil. Specifically, why is it so important that we start using the word unpredictability to calculate recoil instead of just thinking about it like pixels of movement per bullet? Well, let's start with a practical standpoint. The reason why unpredictability is a much better way of measuring recoil is because even a gun with very high horizontal or vertical recoil will still be easy to control if you anticipate the recoil pattern. The perfect example of this is the Honey Badger. Even though it has incredibly high vertical recoil, the fact that each bullet is so consistent and predictable makes this gun a lot easier to use, and therefore precise. An example of the opposite extreme would be the Vector, 
because even though the vector has very little recoil per shot, the fact that the recoil of the vector is so unpredictable makes it very difficult to land shots on a target. Therefore, predictability of a gun's recoil is far more important from a practical standpoint than the actual recoil of a firearm. And now, also from a mathematical standpoint, the reason why we need to start talking about unpredictability of a firearm instead of recoil is because, like I said before, the fact that drift exists and can be proven mathematically means that each bullet is actually not a separate entity, but in fact relative to the bullet fired before and after it. So, this means we need a new way of measuring horizontal and vertical recoil that takes the previous bullets into account. And the best way to measure this is by measuring how unpredictable the gun is from one bullet to the next. Okay, so how do we actually calculate unpredictability? Specifically, how can we calculate horizontal unpredictability and vertical unpredictability? Well, let's start with horizontal unpredictability. Assume there are three bullets, A, B, and C, where C is fired after B, which is fired after A. The change of the position of B is B minus A. Therefore, the predicted location of C is B plus the change of B. Therefore, any deviation from the prediction of where C should be can now be represented by the formula C minus B plus B minus A or simply C minus 2B minus A. Applying this formula to delta X data set gives us the displacement of the actual shot from the predicted next shot in the unit of number of pixels. By taking an average of this column, we can then calculate horizontal unpredictability. Now, for vertical unpredictability, we simply take the absolute value delta y of each shot minus the average of delta y. Taking another average of this column gives us the vertical unpredictability of your next shot. Finally, total recoil of a weapon should actually be called total unpredictability, which is the square root of the vertical unpredictability squared plus the horizontal unpredictability squared. So now the last step would just be to simply multiply the total unpredictability per bullet by bullets per second in order to normalize the unpredictability for guns that fire faster to arrive at the final total unpredictability per second. And now we can rank all the ARs by this value. What this value represents is every second that you fire this weapon, how many pixels is your next shot going to be compared to where you anticipated the next shot to be? ARs with extremely consistent spray patterns like the Honey Badger and the G36C are going to rank extremely high on this list because every next shot is extremely predictable or at least close to where you predicted the next shot was going to be. This means, as long as you know how to pull down your finger in the opposite direction that the gun travels in, these two rifles, the Honey Badger and the G36, will be extremely predictable and therefore precise. Now, guns with very high unpredictability, like the AKM or the Groza, will be extremely difficult to predict where the next shot is going to be, which translate into these weapons being very inaccurate in spraying enemy targets at long range. As a final thought before I go, the reason we no longer need to include stability as a component in the ranking is because measuring unpredictability already takes stability into account. Think of it this way, there are five ways a bullet pattern can look, a straight line, a drift, a bad horizontal recoil, a bad horizontal recoil plus a bad drift, and then also a drift out followed by a drift back to center. Now obviously the straight line is going to be the best recoil because it's the most predictable. But between the drift and the bad horizontal recoil, the drift is by far better because as long as you know for a fact that a weapon will always drift in a certain direction, you can just simply pull your finger in the opposite direction to achieve a very precise spray. However, a gun that just jerks left and right unpredictably will be incredibly hard to control, and you'll end up shooting the right or the left of your target instead of actually hitting your target. Now, obviously, Bad horizontal recoil plus bad drift is the worst case, 
But interestingly, in this last case, because we're measuring unpredictability by subtracting where we anticipate a bullet from where it actually lands, you can see that every time that there is a direction change, that causes the value to spike because the distance between the predicted and actual bullet hole increases drastically. Therefore, in conclusion, as it currently stands, unpredictability of recoil is the best way to measure gun handling of any FPS game as of 2024. It takes both horizontal control, vertical control, and stability into account in just one value. If you have any questions about this method, or if I didn't explain something clearly, please go ahead and ask it in the comments. Otherwise, thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya!